What's up, guys? Welcome back to the channel. We got some more UFC on the go for today. Yes, your favorite. My favorite. Yeah. Just me. You love her. UFC. I do very much enjoy UFC, and uh, I've been watching it for a long time, probably 25 years now I've been watching it, so that tells you a little bit how old I am. I'm not 25 if I've been watching it for that long. And uh, so we've got Chemayev, Hamzat Chemayev, we're checking out today. And uh, the last one that we did, I think, from the UFC spectrum was Khabib. Yeah, I think so. I think that was the most recent Habib, one. Habib, Khabib. Um, yeah, He's so, a beast. Yeah, so we're coming back to a Russian fighter with Hamzat. I think he was born in Chechnya and uh, then got his craft perfected in Sweden, which mm. is interesting. Yeah. Um, and uh, made his debut in the UFC not too long ago, 2020. 2020 I think, yeah. Yeah, and um, won two fights in 10 days. That's wild. Yeah, and in two, two different weight different classes now. Weight divisions, yeah. Yeah, that's wild. So um, he's on the up and up right now. He just most recently beat Kamaru Usman, and that was on a short notice fight for Usman. And I think people were a little bit disappointed with his um, performance in that one but it's hard finding somebody that you weren't preparing for on the yeah, opposite spectrum as well minute. so uh his next fight is going to be against robert whitaker and Ooh. we'll have this one up this video here up before he fights whitaker for sure so uh anyways that's a little bit of a backstory on hamzat i'm sure you guys know that because uh you've come to the video but uh we're excited to look into a little more of chamayo because he is a scary guy yeah he is and uh sam is always interested in the characters We've done Conor McGregor. We've yes. done Habib. So you like to get into these. Uh, the I like deeper. Habib. I don't really like Conor McGregor, but I like Habib. But you like the origin stories, so yeah. knowing kind of how their careers have transpired yes, and stuff, right? I do like that, yeah, yeah. So then whenever we watch the UFC events. I'm like, oh, I know that guy. She knows always. Oh, yeah, I like that guy. His story is cool. Or I don't like that guy. He yeah. seems like kind of a. I'm like one of those people that like to pick favorites. Like I always have like favorite characters or like, you know. I think that's applicable to everybody in the UFC. Everybody has their <laughs> favorites too, me included. But yeah. I'm excited to learn a little bit more about Hamza. I don't know if I know his story in complete. Is you ready? Ready. Let's do it. Let's go. Everybody, everybody, I come here for everybody. Kill everybody. He's so fucking good, it's terrifying. He's so good, it's terrifying. Fight fans, welcome back. He's talking to Dana. I've been in this game my whole life. I've never seen anything like him. In 2022, the boogeyman doesn't lurk in the dark. Or stalk him from man. under your bed. Basically the first punch he throws right on the butt and knocks him out cold. He hides in plain sight, dominating in skill, commitment, and heart. He is a wrecking ball. To earn victory through sacrifice. Oh, oh, oh. You are proven to be a problem for everybody you're in the octagon with. And whilst boogeyman status is handed out far too easily in combat sports, when it comes to the fastest rising star in the 170 pound division, I gonna kill that guy. Things are <laughs> a little different. Oh. Oh. Ah! That hype train is going real fast. Here we look at opponents before and after facing Hamzat Chemayev. The hype is real! Welcome to a Motivedia presentation. I love this. Take money, smash somebody, it's amazing. <laughs> Rumblings of an escaped animal in the welterweight division began in 2018. Don't think somebody gonna be for me problem. I'm gonna beat everybody, like I did today. An animal that, if not caught early, could dampen the hope and ambition of the entire roster when it comes to capturing the 170 pound title. Oh, hey! When Connor's fighting, a whole people want it, largely because of the payday that comes. With Shamayev, it was who can avoid stepping on that landmine. Take in the cage and smash somebody, it's too easy. With carnal needs to inflict punishment, becoming increasingly less satisfied in grappling, only smashing inside a 30-foot octagon would cure that craving. Catapulting on to UFC's fight island during the pandemic. Hamzat mania is running wild, DC. The obscured whispers of a 170 pound Swedish savant would soon turn Swedish to praise savant. and recognition. Six fights, five stoppages in the first round, one in the second. So yeah, no wonder the UFC snapped this guy up so soon. First up at 185, a notch above Hamzat's natural weight, came the Welsh wrecking machine, John Phillips. But what do you want him to leave Saturday night thinking about you? You can't compete with concrete. 
and I have a bow fans, I told you, no one's got power like me. We threw the hottest prospect out of, out of the UK at him, and that kid is a badass. I hit like a fucking horse. You know, anyone, anyone who knows me in a spot, they will know that. Hey. We call arm after the old roster. I'm, I'm going to work my way up. I want to get as quick as I can into the top 15, into the top 10, and I want to chase the title. <laughs> Prelim in the middleweight division, John Phillips versus Hamzad Chimayev. The extra weight would make little difference, with Phillips being pummeled into submission, landing just two punches of his own. Don't want to sit in here and uh, to be Instagram fighter. <laughs> now I'm gonna smash everybody. Uh, I, I love uh, when they come to give up, you know. Drop is hard. We can take a gamble, and unfortunately, the gamble didn't pay off. You know, it's, at that time, his wrestling was better than mine. And, that's how the cookie crumbles. I, I know the second time you were out there, Hamza actually helped you in the back backstage, right? This is amazing. Yeah, no, take, take nothing away from Hamza. He's an absolute gem. The guy is, is so dominant, so confident, wants to continue to fight every weekend. Um, I love it, love it, love it. Love it. Uh, what do you want to do next? Are you hoping to fight quickly? Do you want to take some time? What's, what's next for you? <laughs> Chimaev's next UFC outing, with a rapidly growing army of fans behind him, would come just 10 days later. Move to Dana, I say, Dana, give me one more fight next week. I want to smash one more. <laughs> this time at his natural welterweight. I, I, I was 100% ready for the kill these guys in the cage. Despite being commended by fans and analysts for the quick turnaround, many feared it might leave him fatigued. <laughs> The man looking to capitalize on this would be an Irishman on a three-fight win streak, Reese McKee. He's already fought here. Uh, for me, it's an opportunity. It's a beautiful opportunity to take his hype train up along to my railway. So uh, I'll go out there and, and give it a hell of a go, and, and you'll see. The kid's not just some scrub, right? That it's so crazy to actually see him him doing this obviously we're not seeing it in real time but reflecting on him doing this because to do that like not only did he go from uh, a middleweight fight to a welterweight fight so it's different like you have to put on weight right normally you go to make weight for your fight then you put on weight yeah and fight right and so you're sometimes putting on 10 15 20 25 30 pounds you know to make sure that you're a heavier, bigger guy in the cage when you're on fight night, right? Mm -hmm. So then he, after that, he went back down to welterweight. So yeah. it's 15 pounds difference that he would have had to make weight for That's crazy. within 10 days, which yeah. is mind blowing. So well, I think I they also said that that guy that he fought had 10 pounds on him. Is that what they said? I think they said that. Okay, yeah. So that's really even more remarkable. That's what I was getting to was that he either had to drop a bunch of weight or was fighting underweight yeah. in that middleweight fight. Yeah. And so that's super impressive that he Crazy. went in and dominated and finished the guy um, with the choke. And uh, then is fighting on top of that 10 days later. Like you say, like you could have got injured. You yeah. could have got, you know, fatigue. Probably you know. like think about how hard you'd been training. Exactly, yeah. yeah. And so to have that mentality... Right. He's to be like, OK, I'm Let's not do done. End. I want to go smash somebody else like that's different. You know, that's yeah. a different fa uh, thinking Mentality, process. For sure. He made the joke. Whereas most people are like, I got my payday. Let's take a break. Exactly. He made the joke of, you know, get paid and smash people. I love yeah. this. Right. But like you can tell there are certain fighters that are just different. The yeah. whys that they do they it. They just want to do it. Right. Yeah. They just like fighting or they like even George St. Pierre, somebody that I really liked. Right. Growing up watching him and. You know, he is somebody that really was a student of the game, of being a mixed martial artist. That's what drove him. That's what was passionate uh, about fighting for him. It wasn't the money. It was about being a mixed martial artist, right? For Hamzat, I think it's, just I just really like people smashing up. people and, you know, breaking people, right? And yeah. it doesn't necessarily mean he's a bad guy for that. Just no. from the competitive aspect, yeah. it's like when we get he's in there, super competitive. I want to show you that I'm the alpha, so to speak, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. And that's, I think, you know, the driver for why he's as good as he is because his objective is not, I just want to get paid today. Yeah. It's I want to go in there and show this person that I can do what I want with them. Is he in the same weight class as Conor McGregor once was? No. True, because they had said something about Connor 
just wanting to go in for the payday and then said something about him. So I wasn't sure like why they were comparing the two of them. Yeah. I think, um, Connor, he's, he's gone in a few weight classes, but, um, I don't think he's even been to welterweight before, which would be 170. So sure. he's never gone. He, I, he's much bigger now. So that could be a potential in the future, yeah. but uh, it would be a terrible matchup for Connor anyways. Like Connor's a striker. Chimaev is a, is a grappler and a wrestler. So yeah, I, I just wasn't sure why they were comparing like specifically those two people. Uh, yeah. I didn't, didn't catch that. Anyways, let's, let's see what happens in this 10 day notice fight. Uh, for me, it's an opportunity. It's a beautiful opportunity to take his hype train up along to my railway. So uh, I'll go out there and, and give it a hell of a go, and, and you'll see. The kid's not just some scrub, right? That that kid, if he fought someone else on Saturday, he would have been the bright, shining prospect. Yeah. You know what? I'm really here at the party where I deserve to be. Instead, he went in there as a plus 600 underdog against this Shemaev. There is Hamzat Borj Shemaev. Unfortunately, suffering the exact same fate, McKee was taken down and blown away without landing a single punch. Where is the ceiling for you? Where is your limit? I don't know, brother. I can fight after one hour, maybe. <laughs> if somebody injured, just tell me. How good is, is Hamza Chumayev? Like, what, did you t what was your biggest takeaway from that fight on him as a fighter? You, can, you can't argue the man's fantastic and I think the whole world's really going to stand up and, and, and watch even more than they are. Is this game easy for you? Is MMA just an easy sport for you? <laughs> of course it's easy for me. I like to fight take in the cage and smash somebody. It's too easy. I saw his fights, I heard of him, and as soon as they told me, I was like, yes, most definitely yes. Two months later, Chemaev was back up at 185 for a showdown which was at the time, that's crazy. considered a huge step up in class. When you're a fight fan, a guy like this is the type of guy that you love to watch and follow and hate, you know, and, and, and whatever it might be. I'm going to be pound for pound number one. I'm going to be champion. I have eight fights, eight finish. I destroyed everybody. I'm going to do this next fight also. With his toughest challenge came his most convincing victory. Just one punch. Basically the first punch he throws. <laughs> for Chemayev to capture another UFC win. The first punch you landed, landed flush. I know you wanted to show off your hands tonight. Mission accomplished, I guess. Yeah, but me not liking the guy, that seconds. leaves a real bad taste in my mouth. And, you know, I'm going to do whatever it takes as far as string wins together to get back at that guy. And he kept telling me leading up to this fight, you think I'm a wrestler, wait till you see my hands. Holy <laughs> That's He crazy. wasn't lying. I mean, that's the thing, right? Like, you have to be a well-rounded fighter. If you're going to be elite level, you got to, you know, clearly he's a great grappler and he's a great wrestler. And, um, you know, if you can then add the striking onto that, it makes mm -hmm. a huge difference because... Knock somebody out 17 seconds in. Yeah, which is crazy. One shot and he's done. But it makes a huge difference because then other fighters can't just expect you to wrestle or grapple. Yeah. Right. They know and exactly what to expect, like what's coming. And, and that's what I think that guy that he just knocked out in 17 seconds was probably thinking. He's like, I don't even have to worry about striking. I just got to worry about this guy that's going to try to like grapple not, and take me, take me down and submit me. Yeah. Right. And, uh, but you know, that's what caught him off guard, got shot. It's done. Right. And, um, so you know, we've seen, I don't know if they'll talk about it in here, but he fought Gilbert Burns, which was at an absolute war. And yeah, we, we watched that, didn't we? I, I remember that. I, I watched it. I don't know if you were watching it with me. but I think I did. But that was a stand-up war. So, um, and that, you know, is going to make him a better fighter in the long run, showing that he can stand and, and trade and stuff. So um, I think it's, you know, there's a lot of hype behind him, but he's still a young guy, right? And, you know, people sometimes, I think, you know, look at the Usman fight recently and think, oh, he didn't demolish Usman, who was, you know, his a really you know, well-renowned fighter and looked at as one of the greatest Walter Waits ever because he didn't go in there and dominate him in some fashion that everybody expected that he's not this hype train anymore. Yeah. Just know as you step up your competition more and more and more, it's going to get harder to beat guys. hundred percent. You're long not going to just walk in and walk all over people. Yeah. But as long as you keep winning, like he's not, he hasn't lost. Yeah. Right. So I, I think he's, you know, been through this process where he's been hyped up a lot and kind of overrated a little bit and people thinking, oh, he's just going to walk through everybody. Mm -hmm. And now he's kind of had some 
little bit of pushback. Yeah. People are like, oh, he's not as good as everybody thinks he is. But he's still but, good. Yeah, but this is, well, he's good. He's great. But I think it's just these are the peaks and valleys that you see in a fighter's journey mm -hmm. where people go back and forth with the pendulum. Yeah. But then once you reach the championship status, everybody says, oh, no, he's, he's the greatest. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah. But it's the journey to the championship that's always so interesting, which yeah. is some of what we're seeing here. Yeah, for sure. And he's like literally right now demolishing these people. Yeah, and that's usually what, how it, the hype train builds up, mm -hmm. right? After this fight, you'd think I'm a wrestler. Wait till you see my hands. Holy <laughs> He wasn't lying. Dana's looking a lot skinnier now. Following the Mearshart fight, Chemayev would be diagnosed with COVID-19. Hit with catastrophic effects, Boers would try again and again to train and fight through, but the virus would prevent him from performing even the most basic cardio. I mean, he's, he thought he was going to die. Those are, those are strong words. He thought he would never fight again. And it all had to do with breathing. He couldn't breathe. On March 2nd, demoralized and emotionally exhausted, Hamzat announced his retirement from professional competition. Yeah, when it's time to fight, he's fun to watch fight. So let's, let's get him healthy and then we'll figure that out. Fortunately, things would get better. And by the summer, Chemayev's eyes were back on the prize. Yeah. I can never doubt myself, I know better. All of you critics be acting like you know better. Blowing the smoke, but I know when it just settles. So I'm in my element, it's evident that this level to the game. All of those dark nights I got there and breaking my back. Although he certainly wasn't in for an easy return, facing off against a freakish athlete who'd carved his own name and helped put China on the MMA map. He seems very excited. He said, it's the Leafs versus the Wolf. Let's see who eats who. What is your response to that? I got an 18. What? <laughs> Jay is thirsty, and I'm also thirsty. I want to drink some blood. These guys are even money. They're both negative 115. I, I don't see it. Uh, I think Chimay is going to win this one easy. Maybe I'm crazy here. And then the MMA is all about capturing the opportunity. And I successfully catch the opportunity, and then knock him out. So I win. You, you talk a lot, but uh, you just uh, mention. I don't talk a lot. You talk a lot, man. Again, many question Chemayev's recovery, but dominating Jing Liang like we'd never seen before, he choked him out cold in the first. All once again without taking a single strike in the process. I respect all my opponents, the people, because I'm here in the cage, I have no respect, nobody. If I come to kill somebody, take my money. Picked him up and you walked him to the corner to talk to Dana White. What were you saying before you put him down and went to work? Yeah, he was yelling crazy shit at me the whole fight. I, I basically just saying, you know, I'm gonna fight everybody, I'll fight Brock Lesnar, I don't care who it is, you know, he's just yelling stuff like that. Should I have a car? After the fight, he's like, I kill everybody! I'm going to kill everybody! He's fing terrified. Kill everybody! Kill everybody! I'm the champ! I'm the kid! Kill everybody! You gotta think this has firmly put the welterweight top 10 on notice. Nothing makes for more exciting viewing in the world of MMA than an unstoppable force meeting an immovable object. You saw Hamza in the hotel yesterday. Did you take anything from that meeting? <laughs> we saw Gilbert with the timestamp from the day and everything else, right after Li, uh, the last fight with Hamza and Li Jiang Ling. He literally hits up his manager and goes, I want it. His manager goes, why? <laughs> and in Hamza's most recent outing, fight fans would finally get their immovable object in the shape of a previous title challenger and dangerous welterweight contender, Gilbert Durino Burns. Get down, get down, get down, get down. Durino Burns! You're one of the few guys that put your hands in the air and said, give me this guy that you guys all say is a killer. And you said, he's not the boogeyman, he's not different, he's not gonna be anything different than I've seen inside the octagon uh, before. I believe I'm gonna get a win, but the hype will be over inside of him. I gonna kill that guy. A power in my hand. I believe he's very good. I don't see a monster. Now you are a heavy favorite going into this fight. What do you see? It don't matter, you know. Of course, he's underdog. King is here. 
he, the buzz for him is bigger than the main event, co-main event. Everybody's talking about him. An opportunity to see how Chimaev would react to resistance and providing a back and forth fight of the ages, he responded with war. <laughs> the guy is tough, he come up. I've been dropped, I come up and can I come for everybody now. The younger man would snatch the victory and in the process display the last piece to his puzzle, heart. This is you can't train for. And and you either make it through it or you don't. He made it through with flying colors. I don't wanna I don't wanna take nothing away from him. Nothing. The guy was a warrior. The way I see this thing, we're not done yet, bro. I'm not done with Hamza. I'm tired. I feel a little pain. I love it. Yeah, so that was that banger that we were talking about between Burns and Chimaev. That was yeah. in one of the best fights I've ever seen. Uh, they were just going back and forth, and it was a decision that we, as we saw, yeah. one of the first times that he was really taking it to the deep water, and uh, it was it was a banger, and it was a close fight, really close fight. It was you know one where the first time Hamza had to you know dig deep and come out with the win, and I think like I said before, that was a good test for him to you know. Uh, find out what kind of a champion or you know fighter he's going to be because you got to be tested at some point you're never going to walk well, yeah through everybody. it seems like besides that he's never really been pushed to go the full distance right? yeah exactly so, well that's crazy. why a lot of people try to question his gas tank too because he hasn't been gone yeah. he hasn't gone that far that nobody's often. really like challenged him enough to get him there right yeah, yeah. so um past couple of fights he has done that gone a little bit further into deeper waters but he's never been in a five round fight yet wow so his fight against robert whitaker will be his first five round fight Interesting. and um we'll see if it goes five rounds or not i don't think so i'm going to go on record in this one and uh, at the moment and say that chemayev is going to get the win against whitaker as well and i think he's going to put a whole bunch of pressure on whitaker and whitaker's not going to like that and he's going to take him to the ground and uh like early on yeah, pretty early. I would say within the first two rounds that I think Chimaev's going to probably choke him out. Mm -hmm. And that's saying a lot because Whitaker was a, um, he's a really renowned wrestler and yeah. uh, he's got great takedown defense. So, uh, but I think it's going to be one of those things where Chimaev just too much pressure and uh, he he's takes care of business. He's literally like wild. So, yeah. I think the people that can beat Chimaev are the people that are going to force him to stay standing and strike with him. Cause I don't think he's the best striker mm. on the planet. He's I think, not bad. He's just not the best. Right. He can strike, but it's, it's not his, his bread and butter. Yeah. His butter is going to the mat. So you got to be able to stop him from, you know, you got to be able to defend on the ground and, and, you know, be smart. And, um, I think that, you know, if you can do that combined with excellent striking, then you got a chance to beat him. But otherwise, if he can, if he can get you on the ground, you're going to be in big, big trouble. It's over. I wouldn't say it's over, but you're in big trouble. Yeah. And that was the difference with the Burns fight and Chimaev. They just, Chimaev like didn't even really try to take him down. Mm. He was just like, let's just bang. <laughs> let's just let's just go let's just stand here and throw punches for a solid 15 minutes yeah and that's a credit to him because he still won he yeah. wasn't in his wheelhouse and he still won yeah right anyways i've been talking a lot sam anything you want to add about your experience with Jemaya? he's scary man he's scary he's screaming what he's gonna way? kill everybody every five seconds yeah he's like unhinged unhinged <laughs> yes he's got to be a little bit crazy i guess to be a ufc fighter to begin with yeah but obviously very impressive right like you know a lot of those were him winning the fight in the first round or the first two rounds or the first 17 seconds yeah um and i think that he obviously has the potential to go all the way so it'll be interesting to see what happens with him with this upcoming fight but um i mean i think like for me like the the fighters that are like I don't want to say they're not the most impressive, but the ones that are like, to me, like, I'm just like, whoa, are the ones that are like that, that just have this like raw obsession with it. Like mm -hmm. not like people can be in a great fighter technically, but like if like, I think um, Dana said in there at some point that like the heart and the passion, like he's mm -hmm. just like so obsessed with it that you can't train that for that. You can't like teach somebody how to have that. Right. It's like either you have it or you don't. Yeah. So um, I think that's probably what drives him to be as good as he is. Yeah. Yeah, I think for each fighter, it's a little bit different, but you've got a, like a lot of the best ones. You, there's something about them that's just a little different, a little yes. bit off, as you said. Yeah. And like Sean Strickland. A little bit of a screw list. Yeah. Sean Strickland is somebody else that's had that happen recently. John Jones, who's considered the you know greatest of all time by many. He's, you know, somebody that's outside the cage is just a little bit off and like, <laughs> yeah. 
you know, I think you can say that about a lot of athletes, right? Even Michael Jordan, right? Fair. You know, people yeah. say he's just different kind of guy. Yeah. And yeah. so to be the best, you probably have to be. But anyways, that's enough from us today. We got Hamza Shemaya before and after fighting. That guy was not good for the after. That's for sure. <laughs> but I enjoyed checking it out and getting to know his journey a little bit more in the UFC. Mm -hmm. Now we'll yes, have to we'll see, see what happens in his upcoming fights and we'll see if my prediction is accurate. Yes. You guys can let us know what your prediction for that fight is down below. Leave a comment, hit that like button and uh, let us know if there's anything else you want us to check out from the UFC. We always appreciate your insights guys. So have a great day and we'll see you in our next video. Thanks for watching guys. See you then.